Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Podcast for a Wednesday, January 24, 2024. Happy to be here. And as you can tell by our backdrop, we're in the new Capital Mortgage Funding Podcast Studio. Podcast is brought to you by Capital Mortgage Funding, powered by CMG Home Loans, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number for all your compliance and legal people out there, 1820. Show is produced and directed by Roberto Moshe. He's sitting in the booth making sure that we uh, we come off okay. With us today, we have a special guest from Remax First. He's a longtime guest, a longtime le- realtor and contributor to our show, Matt Bush, Remax First. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, Harry. How are we? T- it's a brand new year, baby. Happy New Year. It is a brand new year. We're going to get into that. I want to introduce Lisa Lawson, the Google of our office. Good morning, Lisa. Morning, everybody. Mr. Harvey Freed, co-host of the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show. Good morning, Harvey. I think we well, there you go. Minutes. Also, we were supposed to have Becky Alley and John Colbon. If they decide to join us, then we will also give them the proper introduction that they show. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that Becky Alley and John Colb are both here. They are. Oh, well, I didn't see it. I can't hear you. So that's probably because, John, I'm old. There you go. John Cole, longtime member, Capital Mortgage Funding, powered by CMG Home Loans. John Cole, also co-host of the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show with Becky, Lisa, Harvey, and myself. Good morning, John. Good morning. And Becky Alley. Good morning, Becky. Becky, are you in a car somewhere? Are we in an office? You're always out on the street. It's all good. Good morning to you. I'm not in a car. I am safe. I'm good. And I'm happy to be here. I love it. Beautiful. Okay. So Matt, we're going to start off with this, Matt. It is a new year. And for the first time in a long time, I want to get your take on this. We have seen tremendous amount of activity. The market is very active right now. The first 23, 24 days of the new year. What are you finding in your world, Matt? Uh, I think people are getting back out there. I think Saving up money coming into the end of 2023, a lot of holiday spenders, people got money back, people got uh, tax refunds anticipated. You know, people are out looking for houses. I think uh, who are finally over that New Year hump, they didn't want people in their house and uh, over Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever holiday you celebrate. So they didn't want people trouncing through their ho- house through the holidays. They're opening those back up. They're ready to go as well. They're ready to next uh their phase in life whether it's retirement upsizing downsizing whatever sizing they're doing uh just like Excellent. you said it's definitely an active market um and we're ready to go well man of course i'm very skeptical i see the first 23 24 days of the of the new year extremely active extremely brisk and you know i just picked up a uh a, a local periodical right here see it says uh basically says more homes are changing hands in the United States, but not in metropolitan Detroit. I'm very skeptical of that. I see a lot of activity. You are one of our Detroit specialists, one of our partners in real estate that specialized in the city of Detroit, Matt. I'm going to tell you this, and this is my opinion. I think I have some sales facts to back it up. Remember, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but not their own facts. How are you seeing Detroit proper? I think it's blowing up. In a great way, values are up, prices are up, bar- our buyers are out there. What do you say? An article at the end of the year that um, Detroit appreciated faster than Miami, Florida land. Nine and nine point eight percent, or some number versus like nine point six in Miami. I know my have been blowing up my phone since that article came out. Plus, it's you know a third to half to get into this market versus uh, you know these other markets in the Sun Belt. Um, honestly, if you're pricing houses right, if you're doing your market research, if you're delivering a clean, to go product, uh, this market is on f- absolute fire. I appreciate that. I'm going to go to our panel now. I'm going to start with Lisa. We'll go to Becky, Harvey, and John. We'll go around the panel. Panel and Lisa specifically. Listen, we talk about it all the time. This is, uh, you know, the third or fourth podcast that we've done for the year. We're doing the show every Saturday, 97.1 FM, Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show, heard from 9 to 10 in our 24th year. Lisa, what's going on in your world? 
Yeah, um, definitely busy. And of course, we always expect it to slow down a little bit around the holidays, and this past year was no different. So I think some of these numbers are skewed, but people forget that, it's, that that's the case every December, you know, just because maybe we had a little lull because everyone was focusing on holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, whatever. And in Matt's case, his wedding, because he got married, New Year's Eve, congrat- or congratulations. You know, people have lives. And so sometimes the holidays isn't the best time to be transporting or transplanting, you know? So I think that's the norm. I think, I mean, I don't know about everybody else, but I've kicked off with a huge bang this year. Um, I've got a ton of people in the works being pre-approved. Some have already done, some of them still working on getting docs together, you know, but this is the opportunity you need to take. We talked about it before. We have a few months here where, you know, rates are still favorable compared to where they've been. And, you know, in the spring, there's going to be a flood of home buyers and a flood of homes on the market. This is your opportunity to kind of beat that competition and get a little bit of an edge. And it's not going to last long. You've got maybe, you know, if you're lucky, four to six more weeks. So if you were on the fence and you're thinking about it, or you're going to wait till spring, I urge you to look now and maybe get it done just a couple months early. Get ahead of the game. Yeah. I, and that's a great segue to Becky, um, Lisa. Uh, Becky got married two years ago on New Year's Eve. Becky, New Year's congratulations. Eve, yeah. Happy anniversary. We we love that. And the fact is, Becky, that that there is no lull. I mean, there there hasn't been a lull. There are a lot of buyers out there. And when we say lull, yes, of course, for the holidays, and of course, around your anniversary time. The however is we're seeing buyers, buyers, and buyers, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the the slow time, I would say, was between, and we know it's like that human procrastination was between um, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, literally the day after Christmas, uh, December 26th, my phone has been exploding. And the real conversation during that time was um, rates were already dropped and no one was paying attention to that because they're so uh, consumed with the holidays that when everyone that's been on the sidelines that's been waiting for the, these rates to drop, well, they've already come down. They're down over a percent and a half almost, uh, for sure a full percent than they were even at August or in October, which was a 20-year high. So the market is already turning in the favor of these buyers. And when everyone else wakes up from their long winter's nap in the springtime, like Lisa was saying, it's going to be a little mini 2020 again. And what do I mean by that? I mean that you know, you're going to get an extra influx of buyers. Uh, the rates are going to be a little bit more fa- uh, favorable. Affordability is going to be happening and you're going to get these over asking. But the truth is, is that you're getting over asking now. This is the same exact situation that we were in this time last year. The first two weeks of the year, you had uh, really good opportunities to get concessions under asking, really good some, some deals. And here it is, it's accelerating. So the reason why we can speak on these topics is because it's cyclical. You know, part of being an expert is being able to see patterns, identify patterns, and then capitalize on these patterns. So our clients that are actually hearing what we have to say, they're the ones that are winning and they're the ones that are getting their offers accepted right now. Um, So they're going to be refinanced when everyone else is fighting over houses in the next 60 days. Those are actual facts as reported by Becky Elliott, Capital Markets Funding Power by CMG Home Loans, Equal Housing Lender, Harvey Free. Reports of December drop in home sales. You know, what do they think? I mean... It's pretty obvious why there's a drop in home sales in December. Number one, holidays. Uh, Number two, less homes on the market versus last year. What do you think is going to happen? And we have the weakest report in December since August of 2010. The why is pretty easy. We're coming out of a recession and inventory issues, Harvey Free. What's your take on this? The same as yours, Eric. What you just said, the three things, lack of inventory, holiday season, colder weather in the Midwest and other parts of the country that would produce these higher numbers. Nothing we haven't seen in a, in the last 30, what, your 35 years, my 32 years, <laughs> as we always talk about, uh, this is why that window's there, that window of opportunity where maybe in March 1st, April, where families are thinking about getting out in the marketplace, we already know the answer. There's going to be triple the, triple the buyers out there. You're going to be overbidding on houses. You're going to need more money to close. And that lack of inventory, of course, it's going to be there this year, 2024, next year, and probably the year after that. Builders just will not be able to keep up with the supply and demand. The demographics are showing that we have more, as we constantly repeat some of these things, more people out there looking to buy homes between the age of 24 and, what is it, 44, 44. years old? Yeah. So yeah, there's it's not going away anytime soon. I hope this podcast uh, urges some families to get out there and get into the market sooner than later. Yeah, first time home buyers are averaging, I mean, you know, between 27 and 41, if you do the math, 
Uh, that's, that's 34 years old. OK, so we know that age group, they're out there buying and they have a lot of money, John Cole. I mean, I wish I had the money at 34 that they had the money at 34. OK, so um, a lot of millennials. And if you recall correctly, there was going to be this jinx on millennials. They were going to live in their mom's basement forever and ever kind of hang out. They don't want to buy a house. We claimed and we could go back and run the video and the tape where we said that that wasn't true, John Cole. I know that uh, it was the weakest report since August of 2010, but that's way in the past, John. Buyers are coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, I mean, you're just starting to see more and more people start to look with rates coming down, and uh, hopefully they keep it up. It's, uh, you know, we'll see. It's to, to be determined. You know, a lot has to, is going to be done with this, uh, this uh, the uh, election that's coming up. That'll have a lot to do with it. Depends on what the uh, the Fed does with the rates. They should be cutting, but who knows what they'll do because sometimes they can't get their own ass out of their uh, or head out of their ass. So it's just what it is. And uh, hopefully these buyers can see past all the the fluff that uh, the news puts out there and really get back to it. Yeah, special guest on the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Podcast is Matt Bush, Remax Furt. Matt is an expert in real estate, especially. He specialized in Detroit metropolitan area, Detroit proper also. Hey, Matt, Fannie Mae came out with a prediction. Fannie Mae comes out and says rates are going to go below 6% by year end 2024. But let me ask you this question. When rates went up dramatically, I think the general public got used to it. So really the end of third and fourth quarter, if you had money, you could find a home. Now with this Fannie Mae report, and by the way, I've got the over, we'll go go over that in a minute. But Fannie Mae predicts that rates are going to go below 6% by the end of the year. Question for you is, it, it's really not a rate issue. It's really an inventory issue. Is 6% enough for people to list their homes that normally wouldn't if they have a 3 or 3.5% three interest rate currently on their existing home? How do you feel about that? So my two cents is, I think, going to be buying or selling right now are the ones that bought in 2019, 2020, the old. And I've been screaming on the rooftop for this now for since I think the first time I ever met you guys. These older millennials who are their first time home now, they have $50,000 equity in their first house. So it sucks that you're going from a 3% maybe to a But the amount of equity you're rolling into that new house, your payment's going to be rough the debt that you might be able to pay off your car, your credit card, that's at 15%, 25% that now you're going to consolidate and get you a bigger house in a better school district with more space. That's good. It's going to keep your payment the same. It's going to keep your style of living the same. I think there's been too much focus on the wrong thing. Three and a half percent is great. But at the end of the day, three what I'm paying, I'm paying a monthly mortgage. I'm paying, you know, $1,500. So whether I'm paying dollars at three percent seven percent forty five percent that's the number that I care about that's the number that I've got to, my family can live on so if I can sell my house roll all this equity into the next house the the monthly payment the same I don't understand why the what the premise of a three percent percent is going to be I agree with that Matt I really do agree with it and and Lisa Lasha, let me just give you we'll, we'll go over a little bit of history here Everybody always thinks I like to go back to 1966 when rates were at 4%. Okay, but let's go back into more realistic time. Let's say 1994, 1995. You know what rates were? They were touching 9%. So if we're sitting at 7% right now and rates were at 9% in 1994, 1995, and as we explained, Lisa, everything is cyclical. Why is everybody afraid of a 7% rate? And it, it just, I don't think people are now afraid of it. I think there was an initial shock. But when you have reports coming out that says that we are in the weakest home buying period since 2010, you think that's going to motivate people to buy? We, you have to do what's best for you. There's a lot of cash sitting on the sideline. And Lisa Lawson, the one place that has never let us down is real estate, Lisa. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think when we're talking about rates, a lot of what's going on is FOMO, fear of missing out, right? They didn't take advantage of it because they were listening to people who, when the rates were four, they said they were going to drop to two. And we said, do it now, do it now. And they had this 
idea that it's going to get better and better and better. Well, they completely missed the boat. And now they're afraid to pull the trigger again because the rates are much higher than what they could have had. You know, and I think that has a lot to do with it. I talk to people all the time. They're like, I should have done this three years ago, or I should have done this two years ago and rates were better. And I go, why didn't you? Well, X, Y, Z, I was listening to, and they said rates were going to drop even more. So I was trying to get the lowest rate that I could. Well, that's what refinancing is for. You've missed out on an opportunity to gain massive amounts of equity, like Matt just said, that you can roll over into your next property, which really helps control your monthly payment, regardless of the rate. So they've missed out on equity opportunities. I mean, you could have consolidated debt, rolled it into a new home. I mean, there's so many other things that they could have done with that, but it's that fear, right? The fear of missing out on the best. So they kept waiting and waiting. And I think that has a lot to do with, you know, just, I guess, our society in general and how we think and maybe, you know, why so many people didn't take advantage of it when they could have. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, lessons learned, like that history doesn't repeat itself and that people are smart enough to make these calls now and, and get started so they don't miss out again. Yeah, that, that is perfect, Lisa. And there's another also, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this to Becky. Um, but before I do that, I want to just say about Lisa Lawson. Lisa's been doing this for a long time. She's very, very knowledgeable in what she does. She always knows what the latest and greatest programs are. But more importantly, um, and I'm going to throw this topic to Becky, and this is kind of the Shakespeare of our industry. You've heard of to be or not to be. Well, Becky, to pay points or not to pay points, that's the question. And I've never been in favor, Becky Alley and panel, of paying points unless the math works for you. I just read a piece where it says rate where rates are and in a declining interest rate environment, does it make sense to pay points? My answer is no. But people should really do the math, Becky Alley, because they're going to need, my opinion is, the current value of your cash and you need cash when you buy a house because you're going to buy those household items that you need to have, appliances, furniture, blinds, well, whatever you're going to do, to pay points or not to pay points, Becky Alley, that is the question. Well, it's situational, right? Everyone has different different goals, different, uh, you know, what they're trying to do, really. And, and even when everyone was really pushing these, like, three, two, one buy downs and these two, one buy downs where it was like a temporary, like, the first year your rate would be like, I don't know, let's just say 4%, the next rate would be 5%, and then it graduates to the original rate. Even when you did the studies on that, less than, like it turned out where less than 20% were actually really interested in those because it was very expensive. And when we are able to look in our little crystal balls and identify the history to see where we're going, right? You got to look back sometimes to understand where you're going. When we know that we're going to be coming into a moment where there's going to be lower interest rates, the points doesn't make sense. And I will say this. In October, right, when the rates were the highest they've been in quite 20 years, the calls that I was getting was, what is your lowest rate with no points? And what that was telling me was that our consumers were understanding that these were we were in a temporary moment. They knew these rates were going to pull back. So they no longer were willing to pay one, two points for to get down from 8% to 7.75, right? Because one point does not equate to one percentage point. So it all is, you got to make sure it makes sense. And now is the same thing. People are understanding that we're going to be looking forward to possibly better interest rates. So it doesn't make sense to pay $3,000 for a lower interest rate when in six, seven, maybe even 12 months, you're just going to slide down with those rates naturally because you can refinance. Refinancing is not an expensive thing. Um, you can roll in those closing costs. Um, and that's the conversation that we have with our clients now. So when we're getting you into the house now and we're driving you where you want to be now, we're also looking down the road to see where you're going to go. And that's speaking from experience. You know, I've refinanced my same house three times, not because I'm using it as a piggy bank, but because I bought it in 18 and I slid down with all these interest rates. I put myself in a lateral position and I used my own personal experiences and as well as my my um, expertise to help our clients guide and, and kind of repeat the same thing because they're going to have these opportunities coming up. Awesome information. This is the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Podcast brought to you by Capital Mortgage Funding, powered by CMG Home Loans, 1820 MLS number. Throwing around some serious knowledge, over 125 years of experience on this podcast alone. Special guest is Matt Bush, Remax First. Matt, going to throw it to you, then to John and back to Harvey. Uh, and I want to go around the horn for last words. Bottom line is, Matt, you're out there. You're pounding the pavement every day. You're on the streets. 
What do you see right now that you're doing at the start of 2024 to set your clients up for success? Um, so honestly, Becky just said, right, it's about who you work with and who you work with matters. People who are professionals in this industry, they sit down, they have conversations, they listen to you and they guide you based on the information you give them. There's not a for anybody. So towards the end of last year, I had a lot of buyers that were really hesitant to jump into an buyer pool. I had a lot of home sellers say, hey, I'd like to sell, but you know, I'm afraid to get less because people are afraid to get a mortgage right now because the mortgages are in the eight. So what's it should I do it? So right now I'm just having conversations, trying to figure out each person buyers what's best for you. How can we put you in the best position to be successful? When's that going to be the but a lot of success this fall from like August on, <clears throat> I don't think I paid lit on anything that I transacted uh, as a buyer's agent, but I still think that I'm getting either at ask or over ask on the things that I'm listing because we're doing it the right way. We're, we're people, we're not just forcing people into a blanket program um, where, you know, by, you know, this works for one person, this works for, you know, everybody, you know, my buyers in the summer turn, and like I said, I was getting, you know, 10 grand in concessions or um, rate buy down through the seller or, you know, closing costs paid for. So it's just a thing to your clients, guiding them what's best for they and their families and their friends and other for them to be successful long term, because those are the people that are going to call you back. Those are going to be the people. That so when you're having these counterintuitive conversations, let's wait, let's do these things. You know, the media is telling them one thing, but we're telling them the other, but we've shown them over why this is the right thing. They're going to believe us versus the, the squawking heads on the random to get clicks. I, I would agree with that. And Matt Bush, I would tell you, you always do the right thing by your clients. Matt Bush, Remax First Real Estate. He's our special guest on the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Program this morning. Heard all around the world. We appreciate everybody tuning in. I'm going to go to John Cole. John? Love the interest rate prediction talk. Fannie Mae predicts Rachel dip below 6% by year end. It's a true classic glands hedge. I, I've got the over. I say no way. Rates are going to be below 6 without paying points. What do you say? I say you're wrong. I say they're going to be they're, they're going to dip below 6 and uh, with uh, out having to pay any points. And maybe not uh, five and a half, but in the high fives. And uh, we've already uh, got our uh, our little side uh, wager on that, which is uh, just uh, a little fun. And uh, we'll, we'll, I'll become victorious like I did the last time, and uh, you'll have to pay up. I don't recall you ever becoming victorious, but that's just me, probably my old man memory. Uh, appreciate that, John. Harvey Freed, let's talk about one of my favorite subjects, Harvey. Again, reminder number four, consumer advocacy. A little bit of uh, advice here. It's that time of year when all the scammers are out, Harvey. I've seen it many times. I'm getting the calls. I'm getting the letters from all of our clients saying, is this legitimate? Is that legitimate? Getting all the letters. I've got letters here, texts. All the scammers are out. They just want people's money. What's our best advice when people say, is this legitimate or not, Harvey? First advice is to stop clicking buttons. Again, if you're getting emails that are unsolicited, you can check the email to verify it. If you work at a company or if you have an IT department, you definitely want to get them involved. Yeah, Harry, the scammers are never going away. Neither is the uh, the brand new loan officers, the brand new lack of knowledge, the brand new bad things out there that don't help consumers in today's marketplace. So yeah, be careful out there. Don't get scammed. And more importantly, we always say, do the math. Anybody that paid points, I'm sort of go backwards on this one. Any family that did a mortgage in 2016, 17, 18, or 19 that paid discount points, threw their money in the garbage. It's a fact. We only deal in facts. That's a fact. Why? Because interest rates in 2020, 21, and 22 were hit historical lows. You could have anything you paid points for, you could have got for free. You would have had to hang out of that mortgage from 16, 17, 18 for at least three years to break even. Again, get more professional people in your life and do this the right way. Give us a call here at the office. Perfect. Perfect. Can't sum it up any better than that. We're going to go around the horn for last words. Our special guest is Matt Bush, Remax First. Matt, last words for a January 24th, 2024. Um, say it again. Who you work with matters. 
Talk to people that you've worked with in the past that have shown you the to people that you trust because your personal situation is not going to be what the national media is. So talk to your lenders, your realtors, your inspectors, whomever you feel comfortable get their educated opinion versus clickbait like uh, Harvey was just talking about. Not necessarily true to you. What you see on the squawking heads are generalities. But what you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your lender or your realtor is going to be specific to you and your situation. Best thing for your family. We appreciate it, Matt. Thank you for that. Lisa Lawson, last words of the day. Yeah, I just want to piggyback off what Matt said. Who you works with matters. And just to illustrate that, I had a client come to me, said they've been pre-approved at a um, spaceship place and they're approved for this amount. And all they had to show them was the, the last pay stub they received, which was dated in January. So it had obviously their rate on it. Um, but I asked for additional documentation. I asked for their W-2s and a few things. He's like, I don't understand why you need all that. They didn't. Well, come to find out, um, last year he had low year to date and the year before. So I asked if he had gotten a raise and he did not because he really has variable hours. He sometimes works 40, but sometimes only works 32. So they approved him making the assumption he was a full-time employee, which he is not. So you have to ask the questions. You have to work with professionals who dig a little deeper. And yes, it might mean you need to answer a few more questions or supply a few more documents. But I promise you, if he went to make an offer at his max level, which he was intending on doing, and then would have gotten denied because the income didn't support it, and he would have spent money on inspections and appraisals, he would have been much more upset than knowing this information up front. So who you work with matters. Work with people who are experienced. You take the time to get the right answers for you and, and work out the details and keep you involved in the process. Thank you for that, Lisa. Knowledge is definitely power. We've heard that our whole lives and going off on more knowledge. Give us your knowledge of the day, Becky. Give us your last words of the day. What is it? Like, was it, what did G.I. Joe say in knowing's half the battle? Okay, so uh, this is what we do for a living and we're here to help change your life through home ownership. And part of that is it's not glamorous sometimes. Sometimes you do have to go back and get that that documentation that um, you maybe forgot about. This is not what you do every day. This is what we do every day. So I assure you there is nothing that we're going to ask you for that we do not need. We do want an extra pay stub. We don't want the extra page of the bank statement. This isn't a capital mortgage thing. That's not any lender thing. These are guidelines that are above all of us that we have to follow and abide by. But the real good ones, like Lisa was mentioning, is they're going to dig a little bit deeper and they're going to make sure that you have a loan um, that is going to close because I could make you blush and we could have a three hour session if we really discussed all the deals that fall apart other places that come to here to capital mortgage funding because everybody in the streets that know us knows that we are not a rookie shop and deals do not come to us to die. They come to flourish and close. And that means a lot to all of us at capital mortgage funding. So Get your hat in the ring, whether it's buying in 24 or buying in 25. You can't have these conversations soon enough. Set yourself up for success. Set your family up for success and let us help you get there. Because if it's not now, it's when, but you won't know that until you have these conversations. Love it, Becky. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And so you got to get your ducks in a row. Mr. John Cole, last words of the day for you, my friend. Well, I'm just going to go back and challenge Harvey uh, because um, pain points is not always a waste of money. Uh, if, um, like Becky said previous, uh, it's situational. And, you know, VA loans don't have any other fees, but they have a one point origination on them. Um, that's just part of the program. And some programs required points. Some did not. Some people needed points to qualify. So to throw a blanket statement out like there, out like that, to saying that you wasted money, you threw your money, and you weren't working with a real lender, well, that's naive to say because a real lender would have done the homework to figure out how to get the loan done, and sometimes points are required. So that's my last word. Becky hit it on the nail saying it was situational. Harvey's off. No, well, and Harvey's a baseball player. I'm going to go to Harvey. Harvey, you know in baseball everything's situational, but uh, I, I think I'm going to bail Harvey out a little bit. No excuses, just win. I think Harvey was just talking about people that paid on conventional loans during that time. But Harvey, last words of the day, my man. Harvey, uh, Harvey's gone because uh, he yeah, knew he, he left was the off. building. Did he know that you were challenging him? That's why he left, John Cole. No, I mean, he didn't that's, know. Hey, that's, that's what that's what an internet bully does. Is he does you know when he gets challenged, he backs away. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, anyways, everybody out there, I want to thank you all for being there. I want to thank special guest Matt Bush from Remax First, Matt is the best. He's got great, great knowledge. He's got great opinions. He always does right by his clients. Matt, thank you for being on. 
Thanks for having me. You got to want to thank Lisa Lawson. Appreciate you, Lisa. Thank you. Becky Alley, want to thank you very much for being on the on the podcast today. Let's go, Lions. Big yeah. game there weekend. You go. I got and my Detroit hat on. Let's go. Woo! Last but certainly not least, John Cole, thanks for being on, John. And, uh, and of course, I'm going to win my bet because I don't set up the bets to lose. So I want to thank you for being on the podcast. This is um, the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Podcast for January 24th, produced and directed by Roberta Moshane. I want to thank Becky Elliott again, Lisa Lawson, John Cole, Harvey Freight, and Matt Bush for Remax First. We'll see you soon. <laughs>